with another Fatog Talk, and we have with us today, and I'm excited, we have Ava with us. Hi, Ava. Hello. How, how are you doing? I'm doing good. And um, we are going to, as people, as you guys have seen in our previous Fatog Talks, Ava and I are going to talk photography. We're going to get to know her what she likes to capture. She has such beautiful images. And at the, towards the end of our interview, we will provide you with her contact information so you can check out her work. But you know what? We're gonna go ahead and get started and meet Ava. And Ava, thank you for being available today. Thank you for inviting me. So how are things out your way right now? Oh, it's pretty good. The weather was 70 degrees today. Really? Yes. Tomorrow will be 38, but things are good. Oh, COVID numbers are going down. Okay. So spring is beginning to, I see signs of spring. All right. Now, where are you located? I'm located in the Richmond, Virginia area, central Virginia. Okay. I'm All in right. North, what you call North, the suburbs of Richmond. Okay. And um, so have you been there all your life? Yep. Yeah. Oh. I've been, I have lived in Atlanta for months. Mm -hmm. um, I traveled around Virginia, worked in Arlington, Virginia, Norfolk, Virginia, Virginia Beach, but home is Richmond. Okay. You know, that's where I was born. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah. So, where with all of this did photography become a part of Ava's life? Well, I was always the kid in high school with the camera. Mm. To be honest, I never studied photography. It's just something I enjoyed doing. I think I got it from my mother. Oh, okay. When I retired from Verizon, you know, I'm trying to remember a woman came to my house to do repairs and she, we got to talking about photography and she introduced me to a DSLR. Okay. And at the time I didn't have a clue what that was, <laughs> but I went out and bought one. And I took a photography class so I could learn how to use it. But anyway, I learned. Mm -hmm. So that was in maybe 2010 or 2011. That's when I would say I got began to get serious about my photography. So which, I always have to ask this question. You don't have to tell us which model, but what's the brand camera that you prefer to use? When I started, I was shooting Canon. Okay. And I started with the crop sensor a rebel a rebel okay 450. Mm -hmm. um i had several canon cameras uh -huh. and i missed them what once i was i was working at the white house back and forth and when i got tired of carrying heavy heavy equipment i switched to fuji mirrorless and that's okay. what i shoot with now okay but she started out with canon, canon. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you're Nikon aren't you no I'm a Canon shooter oh okay yeah <laughs> you know and when I sold it I look back and I'm like oh, why did not I keep some of it like my Canon macro lens oh. I think that that 100 macro was the mm -hmm. best oh yes but yeah. anyway <laughs> I mean we live and we learn you know it, it yes. is what it is I I mean I had sold my first professional Canon um, years ago was a film camera. I got rid of it and I, I kick myself to this day. Like, why didn't I keep it? I know. We <clears throat> so you started off, the lady came to the house, talked to you about DSLR. So tell us about how your photography went from there. Cause you do a lot of beautiful floral images too. So kind of step us through you know, okay. how your, your photography, how, how it interests you and how you chose your subject matter. When I started shooting photography, I was always involved with political events. Mm. So I thought event photography was what I wanted to do. But, you know, and I did that for a couple of years and um, I began to get credentials to shoot political events. And from there, I got onto the White House media. So I was doing photojournalism. Oh, wow. I did that for about four years. Mm -hmm. I did that through the Obama administration. And oh. to be honest, I'm still on the White House media, but 
life has just changed. So between doing photojournalism and you know the White House, I started doing landscapes mm. because you know it's hard to say why, but that's something I enjoy. I like color. I like nature. So I was doing landscapes, and then I began to get commissioned by certain people for projects to shoot landscapes. And I sold my work to a local hospital here. Oh, nice. Um, and I was still going back and forth to Washington, which is two hours from Richmond, catching the train six o'clock in the morning. And at one point I was like, this is killing me. <laughs> mm -hmm. You know, I'm not that young, but anyway, um, I always used to enjoy shooting flowers but when I look back at it, I really did not, I don't want to say I didn't know what I was doing, but it was a lot to learn. Yeah. So once I stopped going back and forth to Washington, I started freelancing for a local African-American newspaper here. Mm. And I did that for about five years and still shooting my landscapes. Okay. So I stopped freelancing for the newspaper in 2019. I think that's when the pandemic hit. Yeah, around the end of 2019, definitely yes. 2020. Mm -hmm. So now we're all in the house, you know, terrified. And I began to um, photograph flowers. And a friend of mine told me, join this flower group on Facebook. Okay. And I did. It's, it's called Florography. And I began to learn how to really shoot flowers in close up. What I enjoy about that is I don't see distractions. It's a, I've, gotten, I've gotten to the point I don't like photographing things where you see a lot of distractions. Okay. And maybe that's why I enjoy it. But I, what I realized, I could shoot flowers from here to eternity, but I can't sell those photos. Okay. you know it's just I mean it, it's beautiful work mm -hmm. but it is I don't think I've ever sold any of my floral pictures <laughs> well, so, are, you, are you marketing them I do okay. I do but so does everyone else <laughs> so I have a smug mug website okay. and I also have a fine art America website okay but I said you know when the pandemic hit I'm like that was something I could do where I didn't have to be in crowds of people. Right. Because I will, I will back up. When I first started doing photography, mm -hmm. it maybe took me a year or two before I got in a meetup group. And that helped a lot mm -hmm. because I learned quite a bit then. You know, you network, you meet people, you go out on meetups. Right. You know, and I even had my own meetup group at one point. So, you know, that was, that was very helpful. You know, okay. you, like I said, you meet people, you learn things, you trade ideas and talk. So I would say in 2020, I had a buddy where we, before that, we used to go out and shoot landscapes, go out in the morning before sunrise, Ooh. go in the evening, you know, I always had somebody to go out with, but when that pandemic hit, all of that came to a halt. Yeah. So now I'm like, I told a friend of mine, I'm like, I've got to go back and start with my landscapes, which might be difficult because I'm in an area where I don't have someone like myself to go out with and shoot. Okay. And I've gotten to the point, it's like, I don't want to be out there early in the morning before sun come up by myself. Right. Okay. There's safety in numbers. Mm -hmm. Have I strayed from, but anyway, so today I would say this, once I started shooting those flowers, I began to learn to go out and just look for little details. Mm -hmm. And that's something I, I can't say I never did, but that's something we don't do. Sometimes we look for the big picture, but it is really amazing when you just wander around and find details and concentrate on composition, mm -hmm. color, background, lighting, selective focusing. That's a, true, that's a true challenge. That's mm -hmm. a true challenge, you know. Mm -hmm. But it challenge. becomes second nature for you because you have an eye for it. Yes. I will tell anyone when I first started, I'm a self-taught photographer. 
Mm -hmm. My biggest challenge, composition. Composition, I understand lighting, but selective focus and lighting can be quite a challenge. Okay. You know what I'm saying, light makes photography. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And Absolutely. I will say this for me, if it's an overcast day, <laughs> That is my favorite time to go out and shoot. I don't think it works for landscapes, but florals, details, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because you have that nice, soft, diffused light. Yes. You know, you don't have that harsh sun. So, oh, yeah, yeah. I remember when I started out and we were out one morning, another photographer in D.C. early in the morning, and I didn't understand light. And she kept saying, look at this soft light. And I'm just looking all around. <laughs> You're like, it's just clouds. I don't see anything. <laughs> yeah, I didn't understand it at the time, but I do now. So, let me ask, so let me ask you this. When it comes to, and I'm sure with your experience in photography, people, or, or you can correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm, I'm pretty confident it's probably the case. People will say, oh my gosh, you have beautiful photos. What camera are you using? And they take for granted or they just assume the only reason why you have those photos like that is because it's a camera. It yes. has nothing to do with you. You right. know, give us your opinion or your thoughts about that. Is it the camera or the photographer? It's the, you know, it's the photographer <laughs> because you can have all the fancy equipment you want, but if you don't know how to use it, and that goes to reading your camera manual, practicing and understanding exposure, Mm -hmm. As they say, you paint with your camera, and it's always something to learn. Okay. But it's it's the photo, it's the um, photographer. I mm -hmm. don't know. Some people say they have these now. You know, like people do iPhone photography and mobile. That that's never worked for me. Mm -mm. I mean, so, it's, it's fine if you want a quick snapshot, you know. But you know, if you really want to capture like the beauty that. You, you can't do with an iPhone what you're doing with your images, you know, you, you just, it's no. I have seen, this is the truth. I follow some people on Instagram and I am amazed at the apps they use on that iPhone to make images. I have Android, so I don't have an iPhone, but I'm like, and I'll be honest, as I've gotten older, give me a, give me my camera. <laughs> give me my camera. I need to see, I can see, you know. So, <laughs> so I would say, getting back to what you said, it's the photographer, mm -hmm. you know. Definitely. <laughs> yeah, because we all hear that. What's your camera? Whatever. What, and as you were talking earlier about distractions um, and not having to deal with distractions, and then when you brought up landscape, you could, I could just, feel like your your passion for the the landscape and the flowers um tell us a, a little bit about those distractions and how you handle making the transition into your passion because you love landscape but you also love floral and your macro i do i will tell you this what i had to learn on you know, shooting flowers i use extension tubes i use my macro um, lens to get close, close. Mm -hmm. And some of us can do that without a tripod, but in reality, unless you have very steady hands, you need a tripod. You know, when I'm shooting flowers, I don't want to see um, the dirt, the sticks, that kind of, that's what I say, distractions. Okay. Mm -hmm. so I don't even have to shoot the whole flower. And that's been hard for me because, you know, when you're shooting landscapes, you're shooting what, what's the word? You're shooting um, Why? the whole, yes, the whole yeah. picture and you get mm -hmm. used to that. So when I started with flowers, I was always shooting the whole flower and I still have a hard time just trying to shoot a portion of the flower to fill the frame. Mm -hmm. You're like, I'm going to get it all. <laughs> let me say this with landscapes. Yeah, I love them. And what I truly believe you better be even a morning person to get up before sunrise <laughs> and get out there to get that beautiful light or even either you go in the evening. 
And sometimes I'm just, I'm not a big morning person, but I will say this. If I travel out of town, I'm up in the morning. If I'm here at home, mm -mm. every now and then, I'm hopefully the spring will change. Okay. I'm like, you know, you got to get up and get that beautiful light because you, you're up in the middle of the day. Yeah, like, people just don't know to watch that sunrise and the colors. Oh. Yes, yes. Mm, Same thing nothing. in the evening, but one thing about the morning, once the sun comes up, you can still see where you're going. Mm -hmm. the evening, once that sun goes down, you're out there in the dark. <laughs> yeah, you know. mm -hmm. I do that a lot too. <laughs> you do? Mm -hmm. I'm, I miss, that's something else I miss because I used to go out all the time in the evening. And now that I don't have my buddy to hang out with, I'm not going out there with my camera by myself. Right. Yeah. So I'm, yeah. You know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That. Yeah. So, would you say what would be the most challenging thing about photography to you? For me, mm -hmm. composition. Composition has been a, a big struggle for me. I can see leading lines. You know how some people can see a triangle or that what's that spiral? I can see leading lines. Sometimes I can see triangles, but that's what I have to focus on composition. Okay. And when I earlier I said selective focusing and lighting mm -hmm. because I had to learn if the, the light needs to be on the part of your image that's in focus. Mm -hmm. You know, for, I don't know why I didn't. You've seen pictures, you've seen that before. So mm -hmm. how I would say composition is been my biggest struggle okay my biggest challenge <laughs> yeah we all have them. our challenges when it comes to some photography let me tell you it, yeah. you, you're it's always enjoyable but we're always learning new no matter how much experience there's always something new to learn it's always something new to learn because With, um, i get to see people do things and i'm like how did they get that how did they get that close and once I started taking those classes, I'm like, oh, okay. There's always <laughs> something new to learn. Always. Mm -hmm. You know, and even with technology, it just, you. Yes. Things are constantly Who knew? Changing. Right. Mm -hmm. I would have kept my film cameras had I known I, and my albums, but that's another subject. <laughs> you know what? Um, I bought some vintage lenses. And it took me years to learn how to do that. Mm -hmm. So I bought this Yashica lens, a 50 millimeter. Okay. And the camera came with it. And it's a film camera. Mm -hmm. I thought, do I even know how to use that? Because I will be honest, when I was growing up and had a brownie camera, I didn't understand exposure. Mm -hmm. You know, I didn't know that. We just were out there taking, taking shots. So now I got this Yashika film camera and I'm like, I bet if I use that, I don't, you can't see what you're doing. <laughs> you're, no. You come from the film. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, don't I come from film. I, I come even before, you know, I came from there when there was the 110 and 110, 26 cartridges. <laughs> what Little two? cartridges. Hold on. Remember it? The little square flash bulb that you would put yes, on the yes, camera. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> you know what? When I went to San Francisco back in maybe 2000, 2001. Okay. I wasn't a photographer there. And all I had with me were those little box Kodak cameras. <laughs> you had to take them all to the store to get developed. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. <laughs> but I think one day I want to take that Yashica camera and get some um, film. Yes, there's Probably some places that are online now that you can order the film and have it then sent to you. And okay. yeah, and you can start experimenting with light and stuff around the house or your yard. That's true. That is absolutely mm -hmm. true. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How would you say, or how would you just describe how photography has impacted your life today? It's practically taken over my life and I promised myself I wouldn't let it do that. It's not a bad habit to have. No, it's not bad. You know, I will say this, when I was working at Verizon, I worked there for 31 years and they always said, what are you gonna do when you retire? And I kept saying, I'll go back and substitute teach. And once I got, I know, 
I was like, no way in the world. <laughs> One started photography, and I was grateful. That became a hobby. Um, it became a profession, because I'm licensed and have a business. And I think I'm grateful that I have that, because when you retire, you better have something you enjoy doing. Something you enjoy doing that you can do for either fun. It doesn't always have to be about making money, but something that will get you out there. So I don't know how to say it shaped my life, but it's something I enjoy doing. Mm -hmm. And it, it does get me out there. I've, I had the doctor say, well, when you walk, do you take your camera? I can't even go out for a walk without taking my camera because I guarantee you are going to see something. So, yeah, I'm not sure if I'm answering that, but no, you are. You are. You know, yeah, because my, photography for you, it it is a passion that's gotten you out. You know, it makes you happy, it and does. you know, if we're going to compare photography and substitute teaching. <laughs> <laughs> I was young when I did that. That was, I was very in my twenties. That's before. I can't even imagine going in school. Uh -uh. I mean, I think between though that choice, you know, one yeah. is going to be much more relaxing. <laughs> yes, yes, and oh, less yeah. stressful. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. There, there are times when I've. You know, I'm sure we have all been there doing certain things for photography will make you stress. Um, working from people, having to um, get a portrait, right? Mm -hmm. Like people used to ask me, would I do weddings? Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Because I didn't, I wasn't experienced with that. And it's like, you have one chance to get that right. There are no do-overs. You know, I've done portraits, but I always have someone with me. But it's not my cup of tea. It's like, mm, no. Mm -mm. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it mm -hmm. is known with a lot of us that do landscape, nature, outdoor photography. When it comes to portraits, you know, people photography, it's a much different ball game and level of patience. I was, I am five foot two inches, and I was told if I wanted to do portraits, I was going to have to stand on a ladder. I'm like, that's not happening. Mm -hmm. Because I have shot events where I had to shoot people and they were taller than me and it doesn't look good. Mm -hmm. You can't shoot up at people. You know, I did mm -hmm. photography for my church. You know, I don't miss, I'll tell you what I do not miss. When I was freelancing covering news. Okay. I don't, it was nice because I could get out there and see events. But what I don't miss about that is everybody has a cell phone, everybody has a camera, and they don't care if you're media, they're blocking you, they're in your way. Because right. one, you're somebody they don't know because you're not a famous person. Mm -hmm. So you run into that, you know. Right. Mm -hmm. I don't, I sort of miss it because it got me out, but mm -mm. <laughs> no, no. I Your don't face know. is saying it all. You're like, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. no. Nope. Mm -mm. I'm good. I will deal with the flowers, people, the flowers and the sunsets. I would tell money. You this, had I started doing this when I was younger, okay. it would be a whole different ball game. And I learned that when I used to go to the White House, because see, at that point, I was retired. So it wasn't okay. about the money. It was something I never thought I would do. So it was historic. Mm -hmm. And when I watched what they had to do to get that news out, I'm like, mm-mm. You know, but somebody said, why don't you work for wire service? I'm like, and I realized I don't live up here. It's just something I never thought I would do, you know. Mm -hmm. I would okay. like to go back there one more time, but I don't know when that's going to happen. Mm. Not with this COVID. Mm -mm -mm. Well, you know, things are going in a better direction. They are. Yeah, they, much better than it was two years ago oh, when yeah, this all that's, started. That's true. That's true. If, if money wasn't an opt, um, if money wasn't an issue, where would I go? Where would you go? You know something, I kept thinking about that and I'm like, I almost want to say, I don't know, but recently I've seen some pictures of, what is it, Death Valley? Is that in, where is that? That is here in California. It's about five hours north of San Diego. 
it's a group of photographers and they're called out of Chicago. I follow some of these folks on Instagram. And even the people from um, the guy from, was it Nisi? Is that how you pronounce it? Nisi Filters? N I S I? Yes. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. he, so a group of them went out there and I'm like, look at those pictures. Boy, I would like to go there just for the texture. Just, I would like Beautiful. to go there. You've been there? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm, I have to say, I'm one of those people where I go and I'll take a bunch of pictures, love a lot of my pictures. I okay. come back, I upload my pictures into a folder mm -hmm. and I may not get to the pictures for a while. Really? Yeah. I'm not, there are people that I know that as soon as they go to a spot, they have to immediately upload it to social media. I'm not that person. And I was in Death Valley and I'm about to go to Death Valley again. And I really? still have not even uploaded or showed the first image. <laughs> of Death I, You know what? Some of that comes from when I worked at the White House, you had to get it out. But also the 30 years I worked at the phone company, mm -hmm. everything was rush, rush, rush. Some of that has left me now. I don't have to get it out there immediately. I can take my time because, you know, you have to take your time, look at your images, not once, twice, maybe three times because you'll miss stuff. Right. It depends upon what you want, how you wish to edit them. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I won't say I'm in a rush now to get stuff on social media. Mm, not, not like I used to. This is what I learned. They say your 10,000 first pictures are your worst. Do you believe that? <laughs> Think about it when you first. Well, start. considering as long as I've been taking pictures. Yeah. Yeah. Because That's something to you really learn. Yeah. You know, because you know, at that time you're like, oh, this was beautiful. And then the today me looking back at the yesterday me, I'm like, Ooh. yes, Ooh. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> Yeah, it's true because we learn mm -hmm. and when I look at some of the things every now and then I have to look at my website and like take it <laughs> yeah yeah you, we well, have I, to because it's, it's always growing <clears throat> yes mm -hmm. so I know you've mentioned with the the pandemic and uh in the last couple of years of the pandemic have you found yourself taking less images, taking more images? I've taken more, <laughs> but that's because that's because I began to grow my own flowers. I began to go in different places in Richmond. That's the botanical garden here. You know, I'll go, I'll go to different places. And I'm like, you gotta stop taking these flowers, you know, take something else. And I think I'm addicted to that. And it's like, oh boy. I mean, it's okay because yeah. it brings me peace. And it's really teaching, helping me with light mm -hmm. and exposure, you know. But um, so the day when I was out, I was looking for winter details. And I went someplace, I said, I walked over here a hundred times and never paid any of these little details any attention, you know. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you just go out and wander around and you don't have a mindset, I'm going to shoot this today. You just connect with something and, you know, go from there. Yeah, but yeah. when I look back, I've taken more pictures. <laughs> I look, I'm like, look how many. <laughs> because some I learned to do stuff in the house, and that's been a true challenge. Oh my goodness. Shooting tabletop photography. Uh-huh. For me, that's not easy. But trying to use lighting, you know, like um off-camera flash, that's that's not easy for me. I bought lights, I'm like, oh. So the other day I took the pictures and set them beside the, the um, flowers, set them beside the window, put up a diffuser. I'm like, this works. You know, all of that's a challenge for me. Well, mm -hmm. but you, you're utilizing the time and developing new skills. Yes. yes. You know, all it's doing is enhancing what, you, what you've been doing, right? <laughs> what would you say, how would you describe your style? My style has changed, but I will tell you this. I don't like, I don't enjoy dark, moody. Okay. I like color and vibrance. Mm -hmm. And recently I began to um, enjoy how, something I never thought I would be doing, but I'm like, oh, I like this look. 
So my the, style. You kind of actually, broke up a little bit. What was that? You enjoy what? Had you know with the um light background. Okay. Okay. See, sometimes I shoot with my vintage lens, like Lens Baby or my um Helios lens, mm -hmm. and I like that soft, dreamy look. Mm -hmm. In the past, I would I would not have enjoyed that because usually when you do landscapes, you want things sharp and in focus. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so my style has changed over the years, but I will tell most people say, why don't you do black and white? Because I don't see in black. <laughs> I like color and I'm going to do color and I'm going to do it vibrant. You do black and white. <laughs> it's, it's ironic because sometimes I will do black and white. And if I put it on Instagram, it'll get 50 zillion likes. I'm like, oh boy, okay. Why do people love black and white so much? I don't know. Are you a black and white photographer? Okay. Mm -hmm. No, I don't think I, years ago when I used to um, develop in the dark room, mm -hmm. I loved developing the black and white images and I would, you know, do my composition and see, and I would know oh, this is going to be great in black and white. Now, no, mm -mm. no, I love, I love color. I love seeing it. I just, I'm like that. It's like even right now as we're talking, the sun is setting, and the color. Those colors. The you color, have color, color on the on colors. You have better sunsets there than here. Let me say this: sometimes I shoot dry flowers, so I had this dry. What was it? Tulip. Okay. And I tried every kind of color you could imagine, and I finally turned it to black and white, <laughs> and it worked. Okay. And to be honest, um, so I entered it in this gallery exhibition. Mm -hmm. That's another thing I need to learn about gallery exhibitions. So um, they everything that was submitted is going to be on exhibition Friday night at Main Street Station. Mm -hmm. It's a Black history exhibition, right? Mm. And uh, <laughs> so I got this flower and I'm like, oh. <laughs> Oh, okay. The name, the title was Where Did It Start and Where Have You Gone? I think that's the the thing. Mm -hmm. I'm like, here yeah, I got this. I hate that. I'm not trying to fall in this exhibition and everybody else got all this black art. But I don't do that. And the, and that's fine. So the, the black and white dry tulip. <laughs> This could be this exhibition. Hey, and that's fine. That is shot by, captured by you. That is your art, and that is excellent. Let me that told me about it. Said he said it didn't have to be black art. It's by black artists. I'm like okay. So I'm like okay. Let me go to this exhibition. And Friday night will be the first time I've gone somewhere besides a grocery store in two years during this pandemic where. It's a crowd of people. All right. You I'm ready? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what has been your most challenging image to capture? <laughs> your most <It's> challenging. <laughs> the most challenging is if you're out there and the light is not right. I, you know something? That's a good question. Sometimes you have to get on the ground to shoot stuff. Mm -hmm. So your most challenge. challenging image that you wanted, you saw in your mind a composition and you were like, Ava, you going to get this picture because you want this? Maybe you haven't had a, 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 a challenging, the most challenging image. Well, I would say this, you know, like I know sometimes you say you're going to get it and you think you got it and you get home and you don't. <laughs> 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 it's something wrong it's blurred you know you look at the back of the camera you can't I don't know I'd have to I'd have to really think about that um it's not a problem so what what oh, can people like, oh go ahead I would say this go driving 80 miles to the ocean front and the colors aren't there in the morning and you <laughs> take the that's a that's not a challenge it's just disappointing mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. you know you that can be disappointing. That that can be disappointing yeah. when you don't get those beautiful colors. Mm -hmm. But now we have apps that will tell us if it's going to be a nice sunrise or sunset. Yes, we sometimes do. that works and sometimes it doesn't. Mm -hmm. 
Absolutely. <laughs> Biggest challenge. <laughs> I t- okay, I will tell you the biggest challenge. It was so it was so disappointing. I drove um, the Blue Ridge Parkway Skyline Drive, mm-hmm. hundred miles from me. I'm like, I'm gonna drive hundred miles down this mountain and get these shots that I want. Right? Spent the night, stopped at Dickey Ridge, and could see this big cloud, not realizing it was fog. Mm-hmm. Fog sitting on the whole mountain. <laughs> it was the worst experience of my <laughs> life because one, I couldn't get the, you know, I'm, I'm not fond of heights. I could never get the shots I wanted because fog set in, you know. That's when you take black and white. Mm-hmm. But driving in that mountain, I have not been back since. Uh, really? Right, because I, one, I don't like heights. But I'm like, this year you drive up there, you just just drive up there. Keisha and I might have to take a trip and drive you up there. <laughs> if, you know what I always say, if somebody would go with me, I'm fine, mm-hmm. you know. But that day I started at the top of Shenandoah and I'm gonna drive a hundred miles till I get down here to Orange, Virginia and just take my time. I went to another place. I went to another place up in the Virginia Arboretum. Beautiful. It was fall. It was in the fall. Okay. Ooh. I I have not. Yeah, I wanted the fall colors. Yeah. You know. Nothing, huh? Mm -mm. Yep. You got to go back. You're going to have to go back. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Because I told myself this spring, you're just going to just go out there, just wherever you want to go, just go. Exactly. So that brings me to my next question. What's in store from, from you this year? What's if the goal? I, if I can just um, visit some of the state parks in Virginia, there are state parks here that I wish to go to to take some landscape pictures. And that's my goal. That mm-hmm. is my goal. I'm like, I have got to get, a, a friend of mine said, look, you just got to get out there. I'm like, okay. Because I'm not getting any younger. And this, you know, I just, so I'm like, go to the state parks. There's several of them in Yorktown, Virginia that I wish to go to. Okay. Let's go out there and, you know, even the um, big tulip, <laughs> the big tulip field at Burnside Farms. I'm like, I didn't go last year. I'm like, go this year. There you we know. go. See, you putting oh, it out oh. there in the universe mm-hmm. now. We hear mm-hmm. you. We're going to expect yeah. it. It's another place I want to go in Northern Virginia where they have a big, What's it called? The Virginia Bluebells. I'm like, go, go early in the morning and go. There we go. I tell you where I miss going. I I miss going to Washington, D.C. Do you? I I do. Okay. I love, I went last summer. I did go to D.C. last summer. Uh Uh-huh. To shoot the um, Lotus. The Lotus? um, You know, Lotus, um, the the pink flowers. I can't think of Oh, the the cherry blossoms? No, the, you talking about the 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 um, water lilies? The water, oh, okay. yeah. Okay. It's a, it's a national park up there, and they, they grow like four feet tall. Oh, and I went. I spent. I even spent the night. I'm like, okay, it got up, was over there before the sun came up, and it was raining. I'm like, I don't even care if it rains. That's my favorite time to go out. Let it rain. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I don't care the weather. I'm gonna go out definitely. You do? Yeah. Okay. So let's let's change subjects for a little bit. Let's talk about gear. What's your favorite gear to carry that's not a camera? My extension tubes, my um, ND filters, mm-hmm. and my um, polarizer, polarizer okay. filter. Is that the type of gear you're talking about? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What did you? Oh, what's your I'm favorite bag? I have a, you know, something I. I take the smallest bag I can take. Mm. And that comes from Kara. I used to drag a backpack with me to the White House. I fell down one day and broke a bone in my foot. That was the end of that. Mm -hmm. Fell down when I got off the train, when I got off the train. Went to the White House anyway, didn't even know the bone was broken. (laughs) Got there and couldn't walk. They called an ambulance and took me out there. (laughs) Yeah, that was an experience. Any preference on weather for you? Spring and fall. As I've gotten older, you know, like it, I don't know about the West Coast, but here it gets humid. 
and hot. Mm -hmm. But I told myself this year, you know, you're going out anyway, because now that my hair is like this, it's like, okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like whatever. Mm -hmm. It's what it is. It is. I'm like, just, you know, just go out there. With, um, with there being more focus um, as a Black female landscape and nature photographers, try and bring more focus or more light to the fact that we as Black women are out here in landscape and nature. Okay. Uh, share with our viewers what that means to you. I wish I could connect with more in my area because I can't say I know, a, so I'm talking about right here in my city or my county. I can't say I know a, another African-American female. I always say I wish I had someone else I could go out with. Because most guys, there are some guys who do landscape, but I'm glad to see you created this group. Um, because there are more of us than I, you know, than I realize. I think some people are, when they see all the images of weddings and maternity shoots, and they think that's what they should do. I'm like, don't be a sheep. Do what it is that makes you happy. Do you. That is the one thing I've learned, regardless of your color. Do what makes you happy. Um, I would like to see more of us or to somebody else I could meet that I could go out with. And I know a lot of African-American photographers here because we were all in a group together, mm -hmm. but we don't do the same genre of photography. And I think most of them are younger than me. So they're, you know, want to make their money. But I don't think people realize you can make money with your landscape photography because I have been very blessed I have over 500 of my images in various hospital locations in Richmond. That's just been a blessing. That's where I've made my money. And it's at the point, it's not about the money for me now. It's like, go out and do what you enjoy. I'm not sure if I've answered your question, but yes, I you did. I, yeah. You answered that question and the second question I was gonna ask, which was advice that you would give to beginners. Read your camera manual, know your camera, understand the exposure triangle, <laughs> you know, seriously. And if you, if you need to, um, if you want to learn, I would suggest join a meetup group or join your local camera club. Mix and mingle with other photographers network, but cam know your camera and understand the exposure triangle. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, Miss Ava, I thank you. Thank you. It was such a pleasure to sit and talk with you. Um, before we close out this interview, how can people get in touch with you? What's the, the website? We will also include it in the comments. Um, okay. But you know, can you tell us your website address where people can find your beautiful images? AvaReevesImages.com. And that's R E A V E S. E -E -S. Mm -hmm. okay. A V A. Mm -hmm. Last name Reeves images.com. Okay. That's my main website. That's right. <laughs> sometimes <laughs> if people just look up my name, they'll find the Fine Art America. Okay. That's because you can buy from that. But my main web website is Smug Mug. But it's Ava Reeves images.com. And that's the same thing as my email address if you're trying to reach me, Ava at Ava Reeves images.com. All right. Well, thank you again so very much for taking the time to talk with me um, for our Black Female Landscape and Nature Photographers YouTube channel. For those of you that are watching, please be sure to like, subscribe, and hit that bell to be notified when we have our future videos. Uh, we have a lot in store for the rest of 2022. So be sure to be a subscriber for our channel. Check out our IG page. We are also on Twitter and on Facebook. So Ms. Ava, we're going to go ahead and sign off for this. And Let me say one thing. Oh, yeah, go right ahead. Thank you for what you're doing. 
because I know it's I know it's time consuming, but thank you for what you're doing. Uh, thank you for thank creating you. this group. Thank it you. It is very much appreciated. Even though sometimes I forget to use the hashtag. <laughs> you know. Got me working trying to find who where is she at? What's she doing? <laughs> but thank you for creating this. You are doing wonderful. You are doing my hats off to you. Uh, very creative. Thank you. So thank hopefully you. I will get on a plane, maybe. Hey, we can come to you. you Keisha know. and I'm like, where, where, let's, where are we going to go? <laughs> really? Okay, good. You all are traveling buddies. Okay. Yeah, we'll travel. We, we met online. Sure did. You met, on, you met online? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So she's but, um, in Virginia. But okay. before we get our gossip on, let me go ahead and, and, and <laughs> tune out of our interview.